So good morning everyone. My name's Julian. I'm going to be leading us through a bit more of 2 Corinthians this morning. And, um, and today I've got 2 Corinthians 5 verses 20, 21. So I'm going to read them first, just so you can start reflecting on them. Then I'm going to pray and ask God to bless this day to us. Then I'm going to talk through three different interpretations of these. First one of which, in hindsight, will probably make you chuckle. And the other two, I hope you have a bit more for you to take with you today. So here we go. 2 Corinthians 5, 20 to 21. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is, making, God is making his appeal through us. We speak for God when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. There you go. So, Father God, thank you that we have this moment of calm to come before you this morning. Thank you, Lord, that in your awesomeness, you want to speak to us. Father God, thank you that, that even though we're hard pressed, we know that you are on our side. Thank you, Lord, that we have your Holy Spirit in us. Please can you help us reflect on this now, Lord, and please can you help us cherish your word through the day, looking out for one another and for opportunities to serve you. Amen. So looking at this scripture, one thing you could do is go straight to your chunky study Bible and go, aha, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Well, that's clearly an outline for the doctrine of justification because we have Jesus Christ who who is sinless, and, and we have here yeah, we paid for all of our sins once. So then uh, you could flick back through, um, through your, your ABC of systematic theology and go, right, well, why did this have to happen? Clearly God is holy, and the uh, book of Isaiah gives us that picture of when Isaiah goes into God's temple and he sees the angels flying around God with their faces covered so they don't look on God. And he says, I am undone for I have seen God and I'm a sinner. And then God purifies his tongue with a hot coal. But we have this image of how holy God is and how amazing God is. And then you could carry that too. But uh, we can't be with a God like this, a God who is so holy, so set apart from sin. And, um, and then we could talk a bit about the law and how the law was put in place so that people could be made right with God by offering of sacrifices and by giving their unblemished lambs and bulls. They were, they were made pure, they were made clean. And, uh, and at the temple, after they'd done this deal, they were reconciled to God briefly. And, but then people's hearts were hardened and it became a bit transactional. So then God sent Jesus and, and the, through, through his dying on the cross, because he was a pure person, he was without sin, and then he was that sacrifice. And then you could make it all build up to this verse. But then another way to look at it will be to reflect back on what we've just looked at over the last three weeks. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul says pretty much the same thing as I've summarized in a very long-winded way. He talks about how the law was made written in stone. But now we have the Holy Spirit and we have God's writings on our heart, which is an amazing thing because the Holy Spirit has been given to us as, as a helper, as a promise of what we have in Jesus, and, and to do this. And then we say, well, because we've got the Holy Spirit within us, it gives us confidence and um, to, do, to do what is right, to do what God wants. So even though the people around us might not believe, we know that we do believe, we know what we have is true, and it gives us confidence to talk to them. And it reflects briefly on Satan hiding people's hearts and, and putting a veil over their words. And this, um, and, and then it says that how, how the Old Testament, the law, was was a glorious thing in itself because it allowed people to come back to God. But now we've got the Holy Spirit living within us. It's even better than that because 
it's with us all the time. And this is how we get to the treasure in jars of clay bits, how the Holy Spirit living with us is a power within us and it's shining out. And Paul uses that analogy of treasure in jars of clay. And then because we've got this treasure in us shining outwards, even though life is hard and we, we know that it is, that the Holy Spirit gives us power to keep going on again. So when we get knocked down, we get back up again. And we continue to keep going and life is hard, but we look at our, our, where we're going in heaven rather than focusing on how hard it is now. And, uh, and again, we have the promise of the Holy Spirit as a guarantee, which reminds us where we're going, what God we're related to and who we are. So then we, Adam talked the other day just about how, how we're here. Um, but we're looking forward to heaven again. And we touched upon this earlier in our, in our series through this time, thinking about to live is for God, but to die is also for God. And, uh, and so we're confident that wherever we are, we're where God's put us to be. One day we will die and go to heaven, which would be amazing. But right now we're here and we can choose to serve him day by day. And so that leads us up to verse 20 verses just coming up to 20 where, where Paul writes Christ came and Christ presented this message to you and you responded but Christ's not here anymore we've got the Holy Spirit and so now we are Christ's ambassadors presenting this message of hope this message of love this message of all we want God to be to the rest of the world and in verse 21 at the end, it's just actually a bit of a summary of, of a reminder as to how we've got there for the last three chapters. That Jesus is without sin and Jesus died for us. And we need to pause and reflect upon that because it's a bit like Easter week and say, ah, well, Jesus died three days later, it came back to life. Easy peasy because we hear it every year. But when you stop and think about it, it is quite amazing that God would make that amount of sacrifice for a bunch of people that have clearly rejected his message. And that's an encouragement for us that we need to keep going as well. And even when it is tough, we've got Paul's writings from a couple of his letters now that we've looked at that remind us that the purpose of this is to reconcile other people to God. So when we looked at Corinthians, Corinthians, Colossians, we had that we've been rescued. We've been redeemed, I bought for a price, and that we've been reconciled to God. And, and that's where we're going in this mission.